Cooper introduces its latest vehicle, the Cooper Terramar, positioning it as a sporty SUV with a bold, confident design and the next generation of hybrid engines. However, this description could apply to many modern cars, and it doesn't immediately clarify where the Terramar fits within Cooper's lineup. The Cupro Ateca and Seed Ateca are getting dated, and compared to competitors like the Kia Sportage, Peugeot 3008, and Renault Austral, they feel compact and limited. The Terramar, however, brings the latest powertrains and digital features, and with a larger size, it caters to growing families. On a less favorable note, some might see it as just a more aggressive-looking Volkswagen Tiguan. So, does the market really need this? Starting with the fundamentals, the Terramar is built on the updated MQB Evo platform, offering familiar engine options. There are three non-plug-in choices, a 1.5-liter mild hybrid four-cylinder with 148 brake horsepower powering the front wheels, and a 2.0-liter four-wheel drive engine available in 201 brake horsepower or 262 brake horsepower versions. For plug-in hybrid fans, there's a 1.5-liter option with either 201 brake horsepower or 268 brake horsepower. Both hybrids come with a large battery, similar to the latest VW Golf, Tiguan, and Skoda Superb, allowing for an impressive electric range of over 70 miles. They also support 50 kilowatts rapid charging, size-wise at 4.5 meters in length. The Terramar is larger than the Skoda Karak and seat slash Cupro Ateca, but smaller than the seven-seater Skoda Kodiak. Design cues include Cupra's new triple triangle front light signature and a rear light bar integrated with the Cupra logo, similar to the updated Forminer and Leon models. In keeping with Cupra tradition, the Terramar is named after a Spanish location, specifically the Autodromo de Siges Terramar, a historic racetrack near Barcelona. While the exterior might have a generic angry crossover vibe, the interior of the Cupra Terramar stands out a bit more. It features a driver-focused cockpit with some thoughtful touches, like copper-colored accents and technical fabrics made from recycled plastics. The overall feel is inviting and high quality, offering a relatively low driving position for an SUV. The sport seats are supportive and highly adjustable, with a good amount of storage throughout the cabin. In the back, the seats slide, recline, and fold in a 40-20-40 configuration, providing ample legroom for the class. The boot space, though, is less remarkable. 400 liters in the plug-in hybrid PHEV models and 508 liters in the standard versions. Still, it's practical enough, and even in the FEVs, the floor remains flat. You just lose the variable height setting. Despite the Terramar's overall practicality, the interior's functionality is hampered by its tech setup. Everything is controlled via the central touchscreen. While Volkswagen and Skoda have recently made their systems more intuitive and user-friendly, Cupra's interface feels stuck in between versions. There are some shortcuts, but navigating the menus can be tedious, with too many steps for simple tasks like switching to electric mode. As the performance-focused brand in the VW Group, Cupra has successfully delivered sporty vibes with models like the Cupra Board. But with the front-wheel drive hybrid crossover, like the Terramar, that identity becomes harder to sustain. The petrol versions might fare better, but for now, we only have the hybrid to assess. The main issue lies with the powertrain. While the 268 brake horsepower output suggests a quicker zero to 62 miles per hour time in 7.3 seconds, it's not exactly slow. The bigger disappointment, however, is its overall character. Much like Toyota's hybrids, it seems to drain out any remaining hints of driving fun. There's a plethora of drive modes and a sport mode for the gearbox and shifter paddles, but in the end, the car will ignore them and decide to do what it reckons is right. That might be to shut off the engine when you're braking into a corner, or to loudly fire it up when you think you're accelerating gently enough on electric power. It just keeps you at arm's length from what the car is doing, making you very disinclined to drive this supposedly sporty car anything other than gently. Driving gently is something the Terramar are actually rather good at, at least in the posh spec of our test car, with its adaptive dampers. As in other VW Group products, when you set them to the softest setting, it rides really nicely, 
dealing effortlessly with both rough and choppy surfaces. The road noise is perhaps slightly elevated at motorway speeds, but that might have been the particular surface of the Danish motorway on our test route. Driver assistance features are standard VW issue, so generally quite mature, and the annoying ones are easy to turn off with a couple of presses of the relevant hard keys on the steering wheel. Handling, on the other hand, is pretty lackluster for something that's billed as a sporty SUV. Again, fast petrol versions might tell a different story, but this plug-in hybrid just feels heavy and very front-wheel drive. Mild understeer is the order of the day, with no hint of throttle adjustability. Like other Cupras, it has pleasantly light steering that's quick but not nervous, though it isn't bursting with feedback. We don't have UK pricing yet, or even confirmation of which powertrains will reach our shores. Most of them probably will, but we wouldn't be surprised if the lower-powered 2.0-liter doesn't make it. We have been told that prices are expected to start at less than 40,000 pounds, and the performance e-hybrid we've been driving starts at 56,310 euros, roughly 47,000 pounds, in Germany. So the price in the UK won't be radically different. That's a lot of money, but not too dissimilar from what you'll pay for a T1 or BMW X1. If the question is whether the Terramar achieves what Cooper promises in the brochure and press pack, namely a sporty, distinctive SUV, then the answer is an emphatic no, at least for the plug-in hybrid. Lighter, simpler petrol versions could turn that around. If taking the plug-in route, we'd hold out for the lower-powered hybrid because you'll save some money and lose very little in the way of real-world performance. Judged purely on its merits, the Terramar has definite appeal. On the daily grind, it will be plenty comfortable and practical, and the plug-in hybrid has that very long electric range and accompanying low-company car tax. The Volkswagen Tiguan and Skoda Kodiak have the same, of course, but you might very well prefer the look of the Cupra. The Cupra Terramar combines striking design elements with a focus on performance, representing a bold step for the brand in the competitive SUV market. Design, the exterior of the Cupra Terramar follows the brand's aggressive and dynamic styling, typical of modern SUVs. It has a sharp, sporty look defined by its wide stance, angular lines, and a bold front grille. The front features Cupra's new signature triple triangle lighting, which enhances its futuristic appeal, while the rear sports a sleek light bar that incorporates the Cupra logo. The overall design gives the Terramar an athletic, confident presence on the road. At 4.5 meters in length, the Terramar is positioned between the compact and mid-size SUV categories, providing a balance of maneuverability and space. It's larger than models like the Skoda Karak and Cita Tecca, but slightly smaller than the Skoda Kodiak. This makes it an appealing option for families seeking practicality without stepping into the larger seven-seater category. The interior, while still maintaining Cupra's signature sporty vibe, introduces some luxury touches. The cabin is driver-focused with copper-colored accents and premium materials, including technical textiles made from recycled plastics.